bottles, and we are at this point getting very thirsty. So we decided to come to this vending machine here to buy the Sani water, and it costs four dollars and fifty cents. This is ridiculous and is absolutely out of control. Now, what doesn't make any sense is that ice cream over there is only three dollars. So why can you get ice cream for three dollars, but you have to pay four dollars and fifty cents for a bottle of water that you could get out of the water fountain? So. We need to figure out what supply and demand has to do with this and why water is so much more expensive than ice cream. Great question. What does supply and demand have to do with this? Supply and demand can actually be shown on a graph, and we can use this graph to figure out why a bottle of water is more expensive than an ice cream. Like Peter mentioned before, we were not allowed to bring water into the park, so the demand for water in the park was very high. And as you could see on the graph, as demand increases, price increases, and demand is highest when there is a low supply. Now the reason why the ice cream from the vending machine that Peter found was so cheap was because there were many ice cream vending machines, and people did not want ice cream from them since there were much better tasting desserts that they wanted, such as Rita's Ices and Funnel Cake. These desserts may have been more expensive than the ice cream from the vending machines, but the demand was much higher for these better desserts. If you look back at the graph, there are also places labeled surplus, shortage, and equilibrium. Surplus is when you have a lot of something you're selling, but no one wants it. You get rid of a surplus by lowering the cost of the item. This was what Six Flags did with the ice cream from the vending machines. Equilibrium is the best place to be. This is when there is exactly enough of an item for the people who are demanding it. A shortage is when there is not enough supply of an item for all the people who want it. During a shortage, the price of the item wanted is raised to try to lower the demand. You could also use this graph to find how many people will buy an item at a certain price. Let's say this graph was measuring the supply and demand of ice cream from the vending machines. If the ice cream is $5, 10 people will buy it. You could find this by looking at the point on the demand curve that is across from the 5 on the y-axis, and you will see that it is over the 10 on the x-axis. You could also use this graph to find the quantity of vending machine ice cream needed to be sold at a certain price. If the price of the ice cream is $3, there are 40 ice cream bars supplied. You could find this by looking at the point on the supply curve that is across from the 3 on the y-axis and you will see that it is over the 40 on the x-axis. So next time Peter, Heather, and I go to Six Flags, we will know why the water bottles are so expensive and why the ice cream from the vending machines next to it are so cheap.